Welcome to a premium professor. Pre Slow down. Welcome to a premium professor prototype production. So what are you puttering with today, professor? Well, I'm glad you asked. I have a bomber industrial sensor and I'm going to see what I can do with that thing. What do you think of that? Perfect. Perfectly. So what we have here is a bomber sensor widely used in agriculture to monitor oil levels. It's a three pin device and it runs on one of these amp seal connectors, right? So you just click it, doo da, get him in there. And now the sensor is powered, as you can see from this meteoroid in the background. So let me show you what this cool little device can do. So as I stated, this is a three wire device. It's made out of this glass filled nylon. So it's extremely durable and it can withstand harsh environments like hot oil. Okay. It's powered on five volts DC which I have this little Heath kit power supply over here providing it juice. This green wire is its output. And if you look on the meter, you can see right now we're at three volts. If I put my hand on here, she'll switch to 1.5 volts, okay? This guy can see water, right? It switches real well with water as a target. And it can even see wine. Boom. Water and wine. Why would that be a value to D Lab, huh? Now, here's the other cool thing is this sensor can also see levels, all right? So, here's a little Dixie cup of water. Up here, you see it didn't switch. But if I go down to where the water is, boom, it sees it through that paper cup. There it is, off and on. It sees that rather well. So you could use this little sensor for, let's say, a keep fill system on a water tank or perhaps your hot tub, right? The issue is, is that switching voltage. You see it's three volts and then we have 1.5 volts. So if you were to take that and put it into, say, a digital input, you're going to need that to switch at TTL levels. So it needs to be five for high right or zero for a low we're obviously not getting five or zero out of the sensor and the TTL switching voltage is approximately 2.5 volts it has to exceed before it switches which we get that but on the downside it needs to go under 0.8 volts that's an issue so now you can't use this sensor with a conventional digital input so what do you do about that so the professor knew he was up against a challenge. And the first thing I thought of was, why don't we take one of these Wago relays? It's much easier to say a Wago WeeWay than it is a Wago relay. But anyway, this is a DIN mount relay used in industry. And it has a five volt coil. It's very nice for switching things and also for monitoring things with digital outputs, right? So if you look at this relay, it's not like your typical DIN relay because it's got a cover, right? So you pop off the cover and there's all the inner workings of the WeeWay. And what's really cool, if you look, there's quite a gap in here. So you could actually build, say, some transistorized switching to support that sensor. And that is what old Professor Prototype has done. Let me show you. So here is the modified DIN relay utilizing the Balmer sensor as an input. So what was really nice is I was able to cobble in this circuit and I used the input of the WeeWay's common terminal as my 5 volt feed. So it powers a circuit, it powers the sensor and gives you an output and I didn't have to interrupt any of the terminals or add any extra wires to the little WeeWay, right? So let's give it a shot. Here's my meteoroid over there monitoring the output of the sensor. The first thing that you see is different is I don't have 1.5 volts anymore, right? I've got zero because I'm looking at the actual output off of the relay, right? 
So I'm going to hook up my meter raid. There it is. Zero volts. And now I'm going to turn on the sensor and let's see what we get. Bam. Five volts. Zero volts. Guess what? That's perfect for a TTL input. Can I still see the cup of water? Yes, I can. So now that I'm able to switch five volts at approximately six amp capability, because that's what the little relay can do, I could use that to drive maybe some logic on a PLC system, or it could actually pull in a contactor, right? And if you wanted to, you could actually get in here and not use the common of the relay at the five volt level. You could come in here and feed it with let's say 120 volts to turn on and off some big monster Ramus contactor to fill up your hot tub. So rather than the meter, here is a visual for you to see that the relay can drive a load. In this case, I just have a little GE47 bulb hooked up, but you get the idea. You could use that internal relay to drive some other device and actually make the sensor very useful. The other thing that's nice about the sensor is it's not very expensive. Check it out on Bomber's website. My next step, of course, before you guys start hacking on me about this little prototype is to make a surface mount board that will drop right into the cavity of this little DIN relay module. And then later on, I plan on putting in a voltage regulator system where you can actually run this thing at 12 volts and do some switching that way in case you're playing with automotive technology. Okay? So it's a very cool project and I can see some great potential in it. Professor Prototype ponders, could it pick up peach preserves? Let's try. So here's the preserves, here's the sensor. Look at there. Now here's the cool thing. Take a look at the tip. It's still contaminated, however it shuts off until it sees the mass of the peach preserves. Potentially a good product for food production. What a perfect plan for Professor Prototype, possibly prosperous. Oh, you know what? It'd be nice if that bomber sensor would do autofill on this glass of wine, but instead, Got somebody on the sideline that does it for me. Right, sweetie pie?